it was every night before um, Mariah went to bed, we'd call her and we'd say, how's your day? And it was always really good conversation. And Mariah always wanted to talk to her mom before she went to bed. And, and, um, and, and I just remember that. It just seemed like it was getting harder and harder to get in touch with her. And then there was days that she didn't even answer her phone. It was go to voicemail. And I was thinking, why? where's my wife, you know? I know the, the, the rest of the matches are over. They got to be either driving to the next town or, or in a hotel room. And there was no phone call back. There was no nothing, you know. So I remember um, leaving a very nasty message. Like, you know, I can't believe you don't call us back. Uh, you know, this is rude. Well, I don't care remember what I said. But anyways, I started feeling bad for saying that. You know, and I go, you know what? Let me, and I knew her access code to a phone like she knew mine. We are a married couple, you know? So I called back the, the phone and I go, I'm going to delete that message. I don't want her to hear that. You know, she's probably got enough stress on the road. I dialed the number and I, it says, you have two unheard messages. I thought, okay, so I got to listen to the first one to, to, to get to mine, you know? And it's this man's voice apologizing for the night before. And you know, and I was like, what the heck? And it was, it was pretty graphic. And I was very taken back. And then I was realizing that she's got, she's seeing somebody else, you know, it was, it was devastating. I mean, I thought we'd be married forever, you know? And, and I just remember, and anyone that's gone through a breakup or lost a loved one, you, you know, the feeling it's like just your heart. You can't sleep. You can't eat. You, you're just miserable. And, um, I didn't say anything, and then um, I deleted my message, and then I picked her up at the airport, and I, I said, I want to know who this is. And she goes, what are you talking about? So she first denied it, and then she just said that she's going to be moving out, and she wants a divorce. And it was like my world ended there, man. You know, the most devastating, hurtful, um, didn't know what I was going to do. Um, because now, you know, you're obviously split everything up and you, you go your own way and life changes. And uh, I got back into drugs. I got back into living a horrible life, horrible financial decisions, the housing market tanked, everything that could go wrong went wrong in my life to the point where I just didn't even want to be here anymore. And then, um, you know, just just making an amazing comeback in life. And that's part of the story I've shared at schools and churches and corporations now was that, you know, no matter how bad it is, no matter what you're going through, you know, and there's a plan, a purpose for your life. And, 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 we, and we could all come back from it. Versus Did you ever have a talk with Brock or anything since that happened? Like get to see him in person and any type of apology or anything from him no, and I don't expect a Christmas card or anything. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.